Welcome to the Podcast Launchpad. Today I'm going to discuss what I've learned from nearly 11 years of podcasting so that you can have an easier time podcasting. I started podcasting in January 2012 at the Geek Girl Soup podcast. It's a pop culture podcast where we chat about movies and TV shows. I'm still a co-host there. Two of my buddies started it almost on a whim, then invited me to join them two months later to talk about video games. I was playing Skyrim at the time for the first of several times. We're in our 12th season now with well over 500 episodes. In addition to that podcast and this podcast, I'm also the host of the Marketing Chat Podcast. I've been running that one since November 2021. So what are some things that I've learned in the past 11 years? First, you need a vision for your show. Our vision at Geek Girl Soup was simply to get together and share our opinions in a public way. The reason that we've kept it going for so long is because we're friends and we do it for fun. We love getting together by Zoom every Sunday afternoon. We give ourselves homework. Sometimes we have different themes. Sometimes we cover a specific show. We covered HBO's The Leftovers week by week. And now we do an annual rewatch every October for Departure Day. If you've seen the show, then you know what I'm talking about. On the whole, if you don't have a vision for your show, it's easy to give up, especially if you're doing a solo show. I'm going to be doing an episode in a few weeks on setting goals for your podcast. Your number one goal should be related to your vision. And I believe that part of your vision should be essentially altruistic when you're an entrepreneur. And that is part of your vision should be to help your listeners solve whatever problem they have in your area of expertise. If your main vision is to become the number one podcast in your category, that's actually tough to keep you going. But when your main vision is to help your listeners, that keeps you going. I interviewed Justin Shank of the Growth Now Movement. Justin tells a story about one listener getting in touch to say how listening to Justin's show saved his life. That was more important to Justin than any podcast ranking. Another lesson I've learned, and this is really practical, is that you need to put systems in place to help run your show. Without systems, it's easy to get overwhelmed. There's so many moving parts with podcasting. Honestly, it's easy for, to forget a piece or lose track of what you're doing when you stop and come back to it later. Once, I forgot to put the audio player into my podcast episode blog post. So at a minimum, you should write down your standard operating procedures on a sticky note, in a Word or Pages document, in an Apple note, or in a project management system. In a couple of weeks, you'll hear from Alex Sanfilippo, who will share his software podcast SOP. I use it and it's fabulous. You create your standard operating procedures as a template. I have two, one for solo episodes and another for guest interviews. Then when you create a new episode, you pick your template and your checklist is automatically there. You can add the release date and episode number. You can set the tasks to be due by X number of days before release date. It's awesome. In a couple of months, you'll hear from Devin Lee, who will talk about systems in general and using Dubsado, a powerful project management system that you can also use to create your standard operating procedures, not just for, for podcasting, but also for client experience and so much more in your business. And of course, there are so many other project management systems to choose from. Having systems in place is a topic that has come up in almost every guest I've interviewed. So you can see how important it is, not just in podcasting, but in your business in general. The third lesson I've learned is how important it is to have excellent titles for your episodes. Good titles will get people to find and listen to your episodes. Bad or bland titles will make your episodes unfindable or unlistenable. Now, an important part of a good title is to use keywords. What are people searching for when they're looking for the topic of your episode? That's what needs to go into your title. No cutesy titles, unless the title still has keywords in it. Sometimes boring is best, as long as it's Googleable. In a few weeks, you'll hear from Deirdre Shen, the co-founder of Capshow, the world's first AI-powered podcast copywriter. 
This is online software that creates titles, descriptions, show notes, a transcription, and more for you just in a few minutes. In a couple of months, you'll hear from Brian Forrester on how to come up with engaging titles on your own. And you'll get solo episodes from me on creating titles for your episodes. Now, the last lesson I'll share for now is how the way you share your episodes on social media makes a difference in how many people go to listen to your show. Most podcasters share a link or an image from the episode and simply write, check out my latest episode. This is ineffective unless your social media followers are already following your show. Even then, there's nothing about this that grabs their attention and stops the death scroll. You'll hear from Thomas Gibbons on marketing your podcast, and you'll hear from Sean Boyle about content marketing. All of these guests that I've mentioned are already on the calendar. I'll be interviewing others in the future to give you the exact tools you need to make podcasting easier and to make promoting your business through podcasting easier. Thanks so much for being here.